Uh, especially, um, I see many friends from Japan, and uh, uh, some of them I m met too frequently. So I, I may have talked about it before, and they may have listened to this, so, but so please excuse me. So uh, what I'd like to talk uh, today is uh, some work I did this, uh, early this year. And this is about uh, this uh, uh, space of lines on five-dimensional hyperquadric. And this is something very classical and uh, a very special variety of low dimension. So uh, you may wonder why I care about something like this. It's very special. Uh, manifold of low dimension. And uh, actually, I, I mean, I wouldn't care very much, but uh, unless there was some reason, and you will see what the reason is quickly. Okay, so uh, let me start with recalling uh, some result, which I uh, termed as rigidity theorem. So let's consider the following situation. Uh, we look at n-dimensional uh, smooth quadric hypersurface in the projective space. Uh, by the way, from today, uh, from at least this hour, everything is over complex numbers. Okay. So this is uh, uh, n-dimensional complex manifold in uh, projective space. And uh, now Fn denote the space of lines uh, lying on the quadrate. So this is uh, classically called the Fano, Fano variety of lines. But, uh, so, but nowadays it's somewhat confusing. So we just uh, call it space of lines lying on the quadrant. And then it's very well known that this is a uh, uh, 2n minus 3 dimensional. And this is homogeneous space under the orthogonal group. And orthogonal group is the, uh, the automorphism. This orthogonal group acts uh, transitively on this uh, quadric, and it also acts transitively on the space of lines. So Fn is a homogeneous space under the orthogonal group. Now what's particular interesting is if a uh, dimension of n is at least 5, then the second Betty number of Fn is 1. So the Picard group of Fn is a cyclic group. So all line bundles become uh, ample. So this is a case uh, where uh, we are interested in this rigidity phenomenon in the following sense. So this is a result I proved a long time ago, uh, 1997. And then uh, years later, uh, with naming more, we gave a different proof, slightly different proof. And it says the following. Suppose you are given a holomorphic family of uh, smooth projective varieties, of projective manifold, such that uh, the general fibers are all isomorphic to this Fn, this homogeneous space. And then the central fiber is also uh, isomorphic, biholomorphic to Fn. That is the rigidity theorem. It's the deformation rigidity theorem. The local rigid deformation rigidity was very well known for homogeneous manifold. Uh, it's a result of a uh, boat long time ago that they, they don't have a local deformation. But this is a question of a global deformation. So when you have a, a global family, a family of uh, projective, smooth family of varieties whose general fibers are this homogeneous space, Fn, then the special fiber is also Fn. That is the rigidity theorem. So in picture, you can uh, hmm, illustrate it as follows. So here you have a family of uh, smooth varieties whose general fibers are Fn. And the question is what happens at the central fiber? And uh, the rigidity theorem says that it's also Fn. Okay? So there's no global deformation. In the algebraic, in, uh, in the projective family. Okay. So that is the rigidity theorem. Now, uh, this was stated uh, in these papers, this was stated for n at least 5. But unfortunately, the proof works only uh, when n is at least 6. So the proof given here simply doesn't work when n is 5. Okay. Hmm? 
or so. Okay, so let's see what happens when I am inside. Something wrong? Okay, so uh, for five-dimensional quadric, it's uh, homogeneous on the smaller group G2, and uh, the space of lines on five-dimensional quadric F5. This is now seven-dimensional manifold, homogeneous on the S7, but it's uh, quasi-homogeneous on the G2, in the sense that it has open orbit. The G2 action on F5 has an open orbit, so it's quasi-homogeneous. And now, using this fact, uh, the following was discovered. The Pasquier and Perron, uh, two years ago, they found a family uh, where general fibers are F5, but uh, special fiber is different from F5. And this family is discovered uh, when they look at uh, this uh, uh, certain representation of G2. And uh, this family is a family of uh, orbit closures. And uh, so the, the central uh, variety, X5, is also uh, is quasi homogeneous under the group G2. So it's, uh, it's, it's an orbit of G2 action, a closure, orbit closure of G2 action. That's what they discovered. So this is the illustration of example of uh, Paschke and Parang. So in the case of uh, N equals five. You have this F5, which is seven-dimensional manifold, a family of seven-dimensional manifold, where each fiber is F5, but the central fiber is something else. So now this is interesting because they have Picard number one. This is a family of uh, projective varieties of Picard number one, but with the jump. They are, hom they are homogeneous, uh, the, a general fiber, but the central fiber is not homogeneous. So it's an interesting example. It's smooth. Everything is smooth. Okay. Now, so uh, you ha you can guess what how surprised I was. So what happened was uh, last year, uh, Pasuki, I invited him because I was interested in his work. I didn't know that he had this example, but anyway, he gave a talk, and during his talk, he mentioned this example, and I was completely surprised. This cannot be true because it doesn't exist. We we proved it doesn't exist, <laughs> but. Uh, but he also didn't know about our result. So he didn't think it's any surprising result. I mean, he is more like a theoretic guy. So he just described certain orbits. And he didn't know what, what significance it has. But I, I told him that we proved it, it doesn't exist. But then uh, I looked at uh, my uh, old paper, and I realized that the proof is simply does, uh, doesn't work. I mean, there's no. It's not even a mistake. It's just an uh, argument. I will tell you what the mistake is. But it's not even a mistake. It's uh, just a... Uh, uh, well, you will see. Did you say that central fiber also has because number one? Yes, yes. They are topologically all diffeomorphic. Okay. So here's uh, the corrected version. The old uh, correct uh, rigidity is incorrect. So I, will, I have co to correct it. And this is the corrected rigid theory. So if you are given such a uh, holomorphic family, mm -hmm. 
whose general phi boy is f5. Then the central phi boy is f5 or x5. That's the correct divisibility theory. Now, uh, you will uh, expect that when I state this as my sort of main result, that you will expect that I will explain to you what x5 is. I explain to you f5, what f5 is. So I have to explain to you what x5 is. But uh, I'm not going to do this. And that's the, the interesting part. So to understand this theorem, you don't have to know what x5 is. And, and I don't know x5 very well. But what happens is that the dual uh, point is the following result. When you have such a uh, holomorphic family, smooth family of uh, varieties with uh, generic fiber F5, then uh, I will prove that up to biholomorphism, there are only two possibilities on the central fiber. That's what I'm going to prove. And that's the essence of this theorem. So by the example, you can say that this uh, is X5 or F5. Okay. So that's the main uh, result. So let me tell you what was the mistake in our old paper. And the mistake happened because uh, we overlooked something about this embedded deformation of P1 cross N minus four dimensional quadrilateral. So let's look at the following. So you take the P1 uh, times N minus four dimensional quadrilateral and embed it by Segre embedding, by the classical Segre embedding, you can embed it into 2n minus 5 dimensional complex, uh, productive space. So let's look at this uh, Segre embedding. Now we consider deformation of this product, but not as an abstract variety, but as an embedded submanifold. We consider the uh, deformation as an embedded submanifold in the productive space. So in our, other words, we look at the following situation. Uh, we are given a local family of projective space and local family of projective submanifold. Why? Uh, so that uh, the general fibers are this uh, Segre embedding of P1 cross Qn minus 4. And then we ask what happens. Well, uh, you can show that the, uh, the central fiber is also the Segre embedding if n is at least 6. So in other words, this uh, Segre embedding of P1 cross Qn minus 4, this is rigid on the embedded deformation as a projective submanifold. So here's the illustration. So inside 2n minus 5, we look at a family of submanifold whose general members are Q, P1 cross Qn minus 4, and we ask what happens. The, the special fiber is also P1 cross Qn minus 4. So there's no way you can deform it as a projective submanifold, as long as it stays smooth, it must be uh, isomorphic to P1 cross Qn minus 4. That's what's happening. But this is true when n is at least 6. Now, when n is 5, this segregate embedding is not rigid. So there's a, a smooth degeneration. That's possible. And this is, uh, there is exactly one additional possibility. And this is a certain Hosebrook surface because P1 cross Q1 is just uh, isomorphic to P1 cross P1 as a uh, complex uh, projective manifold. The Q1 is just conic. So there's a deformation of such a uh, product of two P1s into Hosebrook surface. And the possible Hosebrook surface that can appear inside this P5 is this type of Hosebrook surface, o minus, the projectivization of O minus one plus O minus three on P1. So this uh, uh, Hosebrook surface with a natural embedding given by sections of O3 and O1, this is the possible degeneration of this Segre embedding, uh, smooth degeneration. So here's the picture. So in P5, now this is when N is at least six. When N is five, uh, if you look at the product of P1 and the conic, it may degenerate. Well, it, it degenerates into a Hosebrook surface. <laughs> a certain Hosebrook. Well, uh, this is, of course, for fun, but there's a reason I use this picture. It, okay. In the sense, that, and the reason I use this is that these guys are very symmetric in a sense, but this Hosebrook surface is less symmetric, and that's very important for us. 
Okay, so that's the, that's the mistake that uh, what happened was that we overlooked this uh, case and we just assumed that uh, any uh, deformation of P1 cross Q and minus 4 is P1 cross Q and minus 4. So that was the mistake. So N equals 5 case is obviously not true, but we overlooked this case. That's the mistake. But now you may ask why this is a mistake. I mean, why this has anything to do with the original problem? Because the original problem is about uh, intrinsic deformation problem, the deformation of uh, complex structures. Now this deformation is embedded deformation. It's a cl very classical thing. I mean, by the way, to check this is a completely exercise for students, it's a very classical geometry. So this kind of question is uh, easy to answer. But the problem, the original problem is intrinsic deformation problem, which is much harder. So why this uh, uh, embedded deformation has anything to do with the uh, intrinsic deformation? That's the natural question. And uh, what's behind is this concept of uh, variety of minimal rational tangent. So let me recall the definition. So let's consider a uh, final variety with the second batch number one. Well, final manifold is second batch number one, uh, Picard number one. Now, for each point, uh, a rational curve of minimal degree uh, through a general point is called a minimal rational curve. Then, uh, now we look at the following special sub-variety inside the projectivization of the tangent space. And this is a sub-variety consisting of uh, tangent directions to minimal rational curves through that point. And this is uh, called the uh, variety of minimal rational tangent. Uh, in short, a VMRT at that point. And this VMRT is uh, often is a non-singular sub-variety, uh, non-singular uh, projective sub-variety. And in particular, in our situation, we can easily show that this is the case. So essentially, at each general point, you have a certain uh, smooth sub-variety inside the projective by tangent space at a general point. So here's the illustration. On a manifold X, you look at these ra rational curves through, uh, through a general point X uh, of minimal degree. Then they exist only in a special tangent direction. So if you collect these tangent directions inside the projective tangent space, this is the variety of minimal rational tangents. It's, uh, the name suggests that it's tangents to minimal rational curves. And it's variety consisting of such tangents. And what I uh, stated is that it, this is uh, almost always smooth. It's a smooth sub variety inside the project space. Okay. So let's look at Fn. Fn is the space of lines on n dimensional hyperquadric. This is the final variety of Picard number one. So let's look at its uh, VMRT. So at a general point, if you look at uh, the space of lines through one point here, it is isomorphic to P1 cross Q and minus 4. And the, the embedding into the uh, projectivized tangent space, well, this is not exactly Segre embedding. What's happening is that in this case, uh, this variety Fn has a contact structure. So, uh, and uh, this uh, Cx is not, is degenerate inside the pro projectivized tangent space. So it lies in a hyperplane in the tangent space, and uh, these hyperplanes define a context distribution on this Fn. And what's uh, the embedding of uh, this VMRT in, in, into this hyperplane? This is exactly uh, the Segre embedding. So, up to this uh, hyperplane distribution, you can say that VMRT of this Fn is exactly the Segre embedding of P1 cross Qn minus 4. And that's why uh, this variety appears, this embedded submanifold appears in our original problem, because they appear naturally as VMRT of the abstract variety Fn. Now we can look at deformation of VMRT in the following way. So in the setting of rigidity, rigidity theorem, we choose a section of the family, a general section, and then, uh, since each fiber is a Fano manifold, we can consider the VMRT at, at this uh, point at, of the section. 
So this becomes now a smooth family of projective varieties inside a uh, projective space. So this way you get uh, embedded deformation of projective submanifold associated to the original problem. The original problem is uh, intrinsic deformation problem, but when you take a section and look at its, their VMRT, you get a problem of embedded deformation. So that's how uh, this embedded deformation arose. Now, when P is different from zero, the VMRT is the VMRT of Fn, so this is Sagre embedding. And if N is at least six, we know from the embedded rigidity of P1 cross Qn minus four that the VMRT at the central fiber is also Sagre embedding. So here's the illustration. So this is our problem that we are given a family of uh, projective varieties. General fiber is Fn, and we want to study the central fiber. Now you choose a general section, sigma. And at each point of this sigma, you look at this projectivized tangent spaces. And inside the projectivized tangent spaces, you have uh, the VMRT. And this form of family, now nice embedded family of projective submanifold. And when n is at least six, we know that the central fiber, the VMRT, is also the same one as before. So this is rigid. On the other hand, uh, let's look at what happens when n is five. Then uh, in the setting of corrected rigidity theorem, uh, uh, because the embedded deformation of P1 cross Q1 can have two possibilities, the VMRT at the central fiber also has two possibilities. So in, it may stay the same, it may be just segregate embedding, but it may jump into this Hergebrook surface. So for F5, when you consider the deformation of F5 and the section, if you look at the tangent spaces, the projectivized tangent spaces, and the VMRT there, it forms a smooth family of submanifold. Now at the central fiber, it may become Hergebrook surface. So there's uh, this jump appearing uh, in relation to this uh, intrinsic deformation problem inside the project, project wise tangent spaces. You may have this jump. Now these two possibilities of VMRT as a central fiber, either the Sagre embedding or this Hergebrook embedding, the Hergebrook surface, uh, this corresponds to the poss two possibilities of uh, the central fiber up to biholomorphism. So in our corrected rigidity theorem, when I said that uh, there are up to biholomorphism, there are two possibilities of projective varieties at the central fiber. Uh, this corresponds, uh, this follows because there are two possibilities of VMRTs. Okay. But of course, now the main question is why this is so? Why uh, the two possibility of VMRT determines uh, the complex structure completely? That's now the main question. And this is the more interesting question. So this is the, the more general and more interesting. And uh, what's behind this deformation rigidity is really this question. No. And this uh, key problem is the following. That you are given two Fano variety, smooth Fano variety of circumvention number one, X and X prime. Suppose their VMRT at general points are isomorphic. Does this imply that they are biholomorphic? That's the key problem now. And more precisely, uh, to, to make uh, precise what we mean by general X, we can formulate the problem as follows. So you are given uh, two manifold X and X prime and the domain, or you may consider germ of a point. So U and U prime are very small open set. And you are given a biholomorphism between this U and U prime. And uh, a biholomorphism of this projective bundle, projective tangent bundle, uh, which commutes with the given by homomorphism in such a way that this uh, isomorphism of projective bundle uh, sends the VMRT of U X to VMRT of X prime. Does this imply that this map extends to by homomorphism of X to X prime? That's the key problem now. So here's the illustration of a key problem. You are considering two manifold X and X prime, an open subset. And there is biholomorphism, and this biholomorphism can be lifted to a 
uh, isomorphism of projective by tangent bundle in such a way that it sends the VMRT here to VMRT here. And under this condition, we like to ask whether this implies that this extends to a biholomorphism between X and X prime. And this is not always true. Like in the case of projective space, <coughs> this is not true, but in many cases it's true. <coughs> so for example, for Fn, this is true. And this is a result of Mock two years ago that uh, suppose you are given a Fano manifold of dimension 2n minus 3, uh, such that its VMRT at the general point is isomorphic to this Sagre embedding, then uh, X is isomorphic to Fn. Now, this result also holds for n when n is 5, because this, uh, this is not the mistake part of the problem. And And this implies, uh, this uh, gives another proof of the rigidity theorem when n is <coughs> at least 6, because we have seen that at the central fiber, the VMRT must be, uh, when n is at least 6, VMRT must be of this form. So by this theorem, uh, it follows that the central fiber is uh, Fn. In fact, this result holds for uh, any G mod P where G is simple and P is maximal parabolic uh, associated to a long root. Uh, this is proved by move and so, some path and the other path by uh, Jay Yeon Hong and myself. <coughs> now the, the main result today is this, that VMRT also det determines X5. So suppose you are given a seven dimensional Fano manifold of second batch number one whose VMRT at the general point is isomorphic to this uh, Hergebrook surface, then I like to say that this is uh, X5. So there's only one Fano manifold with this property. That's the main theorem. And this main theorem implies the corrected rigidity theorem because we have seen that at the central fiber, the VMRT, there are two possibilities, I, either the Sagre embedding or this Hergebrook surface. If it's uh, Sagre embedding, then by Mook's result, it must be F5. Now, if it's Hergebrook surface, then by this main theorem, it must be X5. So this main theorem implies the corre corrected rigidity theorem. And I think uh, for most rigidity theorem of this type, the essential point is a result like this. What's behind is that the VMRT determines the manifold. That's the, what's really behind the rigidity theorem. So that's the main theorem, and uh, which I, now I have to explain to you. And this is why I worked on this very special variety, this, is this seven-dimensional variety, uh, this VMRT, because it was, I have to correct my mistake. <coughs> okay, so let's see how to prove a result like this, that VMRT determines the complex structure, mm -hmm. how to prove this. There's a general result proved about 10 years ago, which was named Katang Fubini type extension theory by Moog and myself. It's somewhat complicated state, but let, let's look at the state and then I'll illustrate uh, my picture that will be easy to follow. So you are given two manifold, Fano manifold, X and X prime with the second batch number one. And we assume that they are different from projective space. And we also assume that the VMRT at the general point is smooth and irreducible. Now suppose you are given uh, domains X in X and X prime and the biholomorphism such that uh, the derivative of this biholomorphism preserves the VMRT. So it sends VMRT of X to VMRT of X prime. Then uh, such a map can always extend to biholomorphism between the two manifolds. This is a katang fubini type extension theory. So here's the picture. So you are given two manifold and biholomorphism between, uh, of small open set such that its derivative preserves the VMRT. Then this biholomorphism extends to biholomorphism between the two manifold. That's the uh, extension theory. Okay. So in, in a sense, the structure, this is uh, familiar to differential geometry. The, the, the differential geometric structure of this VMRT it determines the manifold. That's the result. 
Now, if you compare this with the, our, our key problem, our key problem has the same picture, essentially. The only difference was this map. <coughs> so here's the main difference. That this is the difference between algebraic geometry and differential geometry. So in the hypothesis for this uh, main key problem that VMRT determines x, uh, as in ma main theory, more MOOC theory, uh, the assumption is that you are given a uh, bioholomorphism between open sets and uh, isomorphism between uh, projective bundles which commutes with the bioholomorphism. That was the assumption. So this is, uh, this pussy is a uh, uh, projective bundle isomorphism sending uh, VMRT to VMRT. So this is a kind of algebraic geometric assumption about uh, this projective submanifold. Now, uh, for Katang Fubini, what we need is that this pussy must come from derivative of phi. And that's the differential geometric condition. So even if you have uh, isomorphic uh, VMRT in the algebraic geometric sense, that each fiber is isomorphic, it doesn't mean that uh, this isomorphism comes from derivative of phi. So this is a differential geometry condition. So to use, uh, to apply katang fubin extension theorem, you need to satisfy this differential geometry condition, that this isomorphism must come from derivative of this map. But the given condition is that it's just the algebraic e equivalence. So that's the main difficulty of this problem. And uh, the question whether you can choose such isomorphism as derivative of phi, this is uh, uh, what's called an equivalence problem in the sense of uh, Elia Katang. So this is uh, so a given submanifold in tangent space. It corresponds to certain system of uh, differential equations. And uh, the, the question whether you can choose phi as uh, derivative of uh, phi as derivative of phi, this is exactly whether two set of differential equations are equivalent on the coordinate change. So this is a question studied by Elia Katang. And he has a general method of how to detect a problem like this. And for uh, G mod P, where P is parabolic, so for example, like Fn, this corresponding uh, Katan geometry was already developed in the 70s and 60s by Kobayashi, Nagano, and Tanaka, mostly Japanese uh, differential geometers. So in the proof of Mo, for example, uh, he used this, uh, this Katan geometry, this differential geometry tool. To, to show that you can choose this pussy to be uh, derivative of phi in, in the case of Fn. Now, in our case, this uh, x5, uh, such a geometry has never been studied uh, by differential geometers. So we need to develop this new Cartan geometry. So that's the new ingredient of the, uh, this work. So let me give the definition. So it's uh, maybe com too complicated to al algebraic geometers, but I will illustrate it soon. So first, uh, let's look at the definition. So this is a certain structure which exists only on seven-dimensional manifold. And what happens is that this seven-dimensional manifold has a distribution of rank six. And uh, then we can consider the uh, Provenius uh, bracket tensor, the bracket of this distribution. This is a homomorphism from uh, wedge square of D to uh, this, vac this line bundle. Now, uh, H structure on such manifold with this distribution is the following data. So first of all, you are given a sub-manifold inside the projectivization of this distribution, such that each fiber is isomorphic to the Hosebrook surface. And the second condition is that uh, it's uh, more complicated. That now, if you take the, uh, the, there's a certain rank two sub-distribution, such that if you take this uh, projectivization, then these are lines, and these lines lying on, on this Hosebrook surface, and this line exactly corresponds to this dis distinguished line of the Hosebrook surface corresponding to O minus one. And uh, this uh, distribution <coughs> is exactly the, what's called course characteristic of this uh, distribution, or the null space of this uh, provenius bracket tensor. So these are directions where the bracket tensor vanishes. So this is a certain relation between this uh, submanifold 
and the distribution. And finally, there's, uh, this condition is uh, something to do with uh, VMRT, that any plane uh, of this distribution tangent to this uh, VMRT cone must be uh, integrable in, in the sense that this uh, Frobenius bracket must vanish there. So these are, these are conditions for this H structure. This is a certain structure which exists on seven-dimensional manifold. And uh, now this is complicated. So for algebraic geometers, you may just uh, view this as follows. It's a manifold with Hazebrook surface sitting on each tangent space, essentially, projected by tangent space. You have uh, this Hazebrook surface, but they sit in a certain way. That there's a certain distribution, and it's not very uniform way. They, they are tangent to this distribution, and these distributions are not, not integrable, so these are not foliations. So certain differential geometrically complicated way, the surface sits on each tangent space. That's H structure. Now there's a notion of flat H structure. So there's a, a, a G2 group, and uh, this G2 group have seven-dimensional uh, fundamental representation, the real octonions. And then uh, the parabolic subgroup of this uh, G2 group corresponding to minimal nilpotent orbit of uh, co-joint representation of G2, uh, it has a, a invariant subspace inside V, a five-dimensional invariant subspace. And then uh, this way you can uh, define a group G, which is uh, not, not a semi-simple group, not a reductive group. It has a unipotent part. And uh, but it's a semi-direct product of this V and this uh, G2 group. And there's a one uh, C-star group. And then uh, the subgroup H, it comes from the parabolic subgroup and, and this invariant subspace W. And this way you can form a homogeneous space, G mod H. And this homogeneous space is equipped with the H structure. And this is uh, the flat model of this H structure. It's a flat H structure. And uh, uh, the example of Pasquier Perang, this X5, is in fact an uh, equivalent compactification of this G mod H. And that has uh, uh, Picard number one. And in a sense, uh, so this H structure, our H structure, is Cartanian geometry modeled on this G mod H. So this is a curved version of this uh, G mod H. Just as a Riemannian structure is a curved version of Euclidean space, uh, you can Im uh, imagine that this uh, uh, general H structure is a curved version of this flat H structure. So just to remember this way, that a curved geometry H structure is something where this Hozebrook uh, surface sits in a very irregular way. Now the flat model is where this uh, surface sits very uh, nice way. It's flat. In the sense of H structure. This is flat and this is uh, not flat. Now, so in a sense, our main problem from Katan Fubini is that to show that in the central fiber of our rigidity problem, uh, we have this uh, uh, induced H structure, and we like to show that it's flat. That's how you want to, uh, I mean, when you prove like uh, the main theorem, to, recognize, to show that the manifold is isomorphic to X5, what you have to show that is that the given H structure must be flat. That's the, uh, that's the differential geometry question you have to answer. Now there's a machinery, uh, how to recognize that some manifold, some structure is flat. This is a Cartan connection. So it's based on the following idea. When you are given a homogeneous space, the quotient map from the group to this homogeneous space, this is an H principal bundle, and it equipped with a G valued one form given by the uh, Mauer Cartan form. And since it's a Lie group, it satisfies the Mauer Cartan form, satisfies the Mauer Cartan equation. And uh, in the same way, when you are given a geometric structure, uh, on a manifold, which is modeled on this homogeneous space, quite often we can construct an H principal bundle and the G valued one form omega on this principal bundle. And such one form is called the Cartan connection of this geometric structure. If the following uh, natural uh, properties are satisfied, namely this gives a 
trivialization of the tangent bundle, and it's, uh, um, it's invariant under the H action, and it satisfies this natural requirement. So then, uh, if you have such a Cartan connection, then this Mauer Cartan equation for such connection, this is called curvature. And if the curvature vanishes, then we can say that this manifold, the, the structure is flat. So to test whether certain structure is flat, you have to construct a Cartan connection and then show that the curvature vanishes. This is very standard in differential geometry. It's, it's hidden inside the, like Riemannian geometry or all differential geometry. The hidden, what's it, in the back, uh, background of all this uh, uh, curvature computation is this fact. But here we are looking at you know, more algebraic situations. So the, everything here is now holomorphic. So first of all, you have to prove that the Cartan connection exists in our setting. So the first result is the existence of Cartan connection. So when you are given a seven-dimensional manifold with H structure, there exists a H principal bundle with a Cartan connection. And this uh, corresponds to like uh, existence of Levitivita connection, Riemannian geometry. But uh, in this general setting, there is a general result of Tanaka and Morimoto uh, both the Japanese dif differential geometers, and they give a general construction of Cartan connection uh, for mm -hmm. large class of uh, geometric structures uh, under the assumption of certain uh, Lie algebra cohomology condition. And this uh, Lie algebra cohomology condition is like uh, the usual in Riemannian geometry. This is uh, the condition like what is it? This equations, this basic uh, basic identity in uh, of orthogonal group. What was the name? I forgot. Okay, anyway, let's see. So they gave some general condition uh, in terms of Lie algebra cohomology. And for example, for GMAD P, one can check uh, these vanishings using uh, constant theorem. But uh, in our situation, we don't have such a machinery because our group is not deductive. So we don't have this nice uh, machinery of uh, Lie theory. So for this problem, I made all computation by essentially linear algebra, uh, case by case check. So anyway, we can prove this using this general criteria. Now you have to show that this uh, curvature vanishes. So let's look at the curvature of H structure. So when you have a uh, Cartan connection, now when you are given H structure, there are a few vector bundles. First of all, there's this distribution D of rank six. And then there's the uh, distri distinguishes integrable rank to distribution E. And then you, you can consider the quotient bundles F and the line bundle L. So there are three vector bundles, E, F, and L equipped with this structure. And the, if you compute the curvature of the associated Cartan connection of an H structure, you get the following uh, curvature tensor. There are, unfortunately, for this geometry, there are 21 components of curvature tensors, as far as I know. You may remove some of them by further calculation. But what I, from the calculation I did, there are 21 components. So this corresponds in Riemannian geometry, if you remember Riemannian geometry. The curvature tensor has three components, the scalar curvature, rich curvature, and vial curvature. In this geometry, this H structure geometry, the curvature tensor has a priori 21 components. So it's much more complicated. And these are sections of these vector bundles associated with E, F, and N. But here, our structure is a holomorphic structure. So these are sections of a holomorphic vector bundle. So the curvature tensor gives holomorphic sections, 21 holomorphic sections of these vector bundles. So that's curvature tensor. And you have to show that these uh, uh, holomorphic sections vanish. Now the difficulty here is that uh, when you like to show that the uh, holomorphic section of some vector bundle vanish, if the manifold is uh, compact, then it's uh, easier usually. But here our manifold is not compact manifold. It's a uh, certain seven-dimensional manifold. And it's supposed to be an open set of the X5, open orbit. So that's the difficulty. But here's how you prove the uh, main theory. Now, so let's review, summarize what we have done so far. So we are given a seven-dimensional Fano manifold whose BMRT is isomorphic to this Hergebruck surface at the general point. 
And then you can get an H structure on a Jarisky open subset. It's not defined at every point. It's defined only on general point. So it's defined on an open subset. Now on this open subset M, uh, we can construct a uh, cartan connection. And now if, if the curvature also vanishes, then this H structure is locally flat. And then X must be biolomic to X5 by uh, cartan fubini extension theory. So what we really have to do is to show that uh, this curvature vanishes. So there are these 21 holomorphic sections of vector bundles on this open set M, uh, which you have to prove uh, vanish. And that's very difficult, as I said, that when you are given a holomorphic section on an open set, there's, a, in general, no way you can prove it vanishes. If it's compact, it's easier. But when it's not compact, it's hard. So the first step to do this is extension. So you have to extend the H structure from the open set to a bigger open set in the following way. So you are given a, uh, you start, to, you start to with a seven-dimensional final manifold with a Jaliski open subset uh, with H structure on M. Now, if you choose a general minimal relational curve or this final manifold, where some part of it intersect this open set, but then you look at the behavior of this uh, VMRT along uh, the canonical section given by the tangents of this curve. Then uh, from the deformation theory of relational curve, you can show that the second and third fundamental form of this projective submanifold this uh, unchanges as, as X moves. And this way, you can recover this Hosebrook uh, surface at every point of the, um, uh, this curve because the Hosebrook surface is determined by its second and third fundamental form at the general point. So this is a result in projective geometry of Hosebrook surface. So this way, you can extend the H structure to a neighborhood of the curve, so slightly bigger open set. So here's the, and this is uh, also, uh, this argument was, was used by Moog for, in the setting of GMRP. So here's the picture. So our H structure is originally defined on a Jarisky open set of the projective manifold X. But uh, along a regional curve, which intersect this open set, but which go out of this open set usually, uh, this H structure behaves very nicely. The VMRT be behaves very nicely, so we can push it to a bigger open set, to a neighborhood of the regional curve, so you can increase the area where H, is the H structure is defined. So now H structure is defined in, in a neighborhood of, uh, of regional curve. And that's nice, because now you have compact sub-manifold, compact sub-variety inside our open set then you can prove that something vanishes, some holomorphic section vanishes. So this is uh, now how we proceed. So there's this uh, Morris Benden break that uh, if you restrict the tangent bundle to minimal rational curve, general minimal rational curve, it always splits in this way. In seven dimensional case here, it splits as O2 and two O1 factors and four trivial factors. And then you can look at how this vector bundle E, D, F, E, F, L splits. And you can show that this vector bundle splits this way. Now, this does not necessarily show that the 21 vector bundles has no holomorphic section. But uh, it shows that the holomorphic section must have a very special type. So, for example, like uh, if you suppose you have a uh, vector bundle like home L to E then you can see that the only possibility is that uh, this O1 must have image on this O1. So there's restriction you can uh, squeeze out uh, from the splitting type and uh, also the, uh, the sub geometry of Hosebrook sub itself. So this way you can show that the, this, uh, this curvature tensors, these 21 vector bundles, have no non-zero section on the manifold M. So they may have a holomorphic section along the rational curve, but because of this uh, way that the rational curves are related to each other, you eventually can uh, show that they must vanish on the whole manifold then. So what we are doing is that we are given uh, this manifold is H structure, but along each minimal rational curve, we sort of show that the curvature tensor partially vanishes. 
And then these rational curves, uh, there are lots of such rational curves. So it becomes flat along these rational curves. And there are more and more. So it becomes more and more flat. And finally, you show that it's completely flat manifold. And so this way, you show that the manifold must be the uh, standard one. OK. Thank you. So, are there any questions? <laughs>